Hello guys, this is Mauro from PrintInfoTech.com and in this video we'll look at the new features and changes included in Windows 10 build 17093. This new test version of Windows 10 is part of the next feature update due in 2018, which we currently we know it as the Redstone 4 or version 1803. Now let's have a closer look at the most worthy improvements in this release. On Windows 10 build 17093, the context menu for Action Center has been updated to display the focus assist options in a sub menu. Also, Windows 10 updates the OneDrive files on demand icon in the navigation pane of File Explorer to be closer to the file, as you can see right here. And if you use the My People feature, you will now notice that the experience now uses the theme color you currently have configured on your device. Build 17093 also simplifies the process to connect Bluetooth devices to your computer. Now, Windows 10 will automatically detect nearby Bluetooth devices that are ready to be paired. When your device is detected, you will see a pop-up that allows you to complete the setup with just one click, as you can see in this image from Microsoft. Now let's dive into the settings changes. On System, Display, now you will find a new Advanced Graphics Settings page that allows you to manage graphic settings for apps on computers with multiple GPUs. So basically, these new settings allow you to force an app to use a specific GPU instead of Windows deciding for you, which can ultimately improve performance and save battery life. To configure an app, select the application type, which you can select from classic apps or those from the store selecting the universal app option. Then select the app and click Add. As I already have it added, you can just click the app and then click the options button. Here you will be presented with three different options that you can use. The default is system default, which basically allows Windows to decide for you which GPU to use for that particular application. Selecting the power saving option will make the app use the graphic processor that uses the least power. Most of the time, this is the integrated GPU included on your computer. You can also select high performance option, which will allow the app to use the most powerful GPU installed on your computer. Most of the time, this is an external GPU or a dedicated graphics processor. Once you select the settings, click Save, and now when you run the app, it will use the GPU that you specify. If you want to revert the changes, you can simply go back to the options and select System Default and click Save, or you can just simply remove the app. Just keep in mind that the settings you configure on this page will always be preferred over those similar settings that you can configure on control panels on applications to manage different GPUs, such as those offered by NVIDIA and AMD. Ultimately, the app has the uh, decision to decide which processor to use. So if you're changing the settings and they're not working, you may need to change the uh, GPU preferences within the app itself. And finally, you will also find an option that is enabled by default that allows you to use optimized settings for a better gaming and app performance while in full screen mode. On devices, the typing page now includes an option to enable or disable multilingual text prediction. When this feature is enabled, it allows Windows 10 to assist you with text predictions for up to three languages without you having to switch to a primary language to get predictions. However, this option is only available for the touch keyboard. On apps, the video playback page now includes a calibration tool for devices with HDR video support, but the option will only be available if HDR video is supported on your device. On accounts, the uh, signing options page doesn't include anything new, but Microsoft is rewarding this option at the bottom of the page to make it clear that using your signing option to automatically finish setting up your device will also be used to reopen apps after an update or restart. On ease of access, there are not new options included on this section, but there are new improvements to the experience. For example, you can now use Navigator in safe mode, and if you have an eye control supported device, you will find a number of improvements. For example, it is now easier to scroll content, such as those from websites and emails. The eye control launchpad has also been updated to include a number of new options. For example, 
Now you have a direct left click and a direct right click for faster access to common tasks. We also have a, a button to access the start menu, timeline and settings, and for device calibration. In addition, there is even a new pause button that you can use when the launchpad is not needed to prevent accidental clicks. If you're not familiar with eye control, this is a feature that allows to control Windows 10 only with their eyes. And if you use the pause button, you can simply you can simply glance the button again to reactivate the launch pad. On privacy, this section has been updated and now it separates settings into different groups, including Windows permissions and apps permissions. On speech inking and typing, now there is an option to access the user dictionary that you can use to clear your dictionary history. But unfortunately, you can remove or add new words individually. On diagnostic and feedback, now there is an option to delete the diagnostic data that has been collected on your device. But even if you use this feature, you may still have to access your Microsoft account to delete additional data, which you can do that clicking this link. The uh, file system page is a new feature included on Windows 10 build 17.093. And it simply allows you to allow or deny apps to access to all your files, including those stored on your documents, pictures, and even on the uh, OneDrive folder available on your computer. On update and security, the Windows security page has been updated and it now includes two more options, including account protection, and device security that access these two, these two new areas on the Windows Defender Security Center. And that's pretty much all that's new with the settings app on Windows 10, built 17.093. The Windows Defender Security Center app has also been updated and on Windows 10, built 17.093, you will find a number of changes. For example, in the home page, you will now find a status for more areas of protection that are now included with the Security Center app. One of the things you also notice right away is that the header of the page has new text and now it reads security at glance and you no longer see information about the antivirus. On virus and threat protection, there are no new options, but you will find quite a few tweaks. For example, can scan history now has been renamed to threat history you will not find a quick scan now button. Now it only reads scan now. But if you don't change the settings, when you click this button, it will run a quick scan. You still can go to the uh, advanced scan options to run a different type of scan. On Windows and Threat Protection settings, you will no longer find the Control Folder Access feature. Instead, Microsoft has added a new page that is called Ransomware Protection. And that's where you can enable, disable, and configure the control folder access feature. Account protection is a new section on the uh, Windows Defender Security Center app, but it's just simply a page that will encourage password users to configure Windows Hello Face, fingerprint, and PIN for a faster access to Windows 10. In addition, users using dynamic lock will now get notified if the feature stopped working for any reason. Device security is yet another page now available on this experience that provides a status reporting and management for those security features included on your device, which means that the options available on this page will vary between different computers configuration. And now if you go to the settings page for Windows Defender Security Center, you will find a new option to disable notifications if problems are found with dynamic lock. And that's pretty much what's new on Windows Defender Security Center for Windows 10 build 17.093. This preview of Windows 10 also includes a new version of Microsoft Edge with a few new improvements. For example, the uh, full screen mode that you can access by pressing F11 has been updated. So now when you, when you move the mouse towards the top, it will reveal an interface that allows you to access different tabs, tools, and your favorites if the uh, favorite bar is configured to be visible. Also, now when you click and drag a link from the address bar 
to the favorite bar, now you will see the icon and the name of the link after you drag in. If you need to print a page with web content, you can now do so without advertisements with a new clutter-free printing. You can access this feature by going to the uh, print experience and selecting the clutter-free printing option and turning that to on. Finally, on the settings for Microsoft Edge, you will now find two options, one to export book data or clear the book data collected by those books that you get from the Microsoft Store. And that's what's new with Microsoft Edge on Build 17093. In this Redstone 4 preview, you also are going to find a new redesigned game bar that not only looks a lot better than before, but settings are a lot easier to find as well. In this new updated experience, the game bar includes support for the light and dark themes included on Windows 10. You will now see a clock on the right, and now you will find quick access to your captures to turn on the camera and microphone, and you can even edit the title of your Mixer Extreme. If you want to change the theme, for example, you can click the settings and change to the dark theme. The overall performance of the uh, Windows 10 builds 17093 is good, but I wouldn't recommend to install it on your primary machine as there are still bugs and this is not the final version of the next release of Windows 10. Just gonna show you really quick how the uh, performance looks like on my machine so you can get an idea of the uh, C CPU usage, memory, disk, and ethernet. As always, the download takes around three gigabytes and anyone can get this update by joining the uh, Windows Insider program through the uh, settings up, going to update and security and going to the uh, Windows Insider program. And that's pretty much all that's new with Windows 10 build 17093. I'll be also leaving a link to an article that includes more details about this particular release. Remember to like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And I just hope this video was informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.